Hello everyone, I am Dr. Srivanala. Today's topic is edema, types and pathogenesis. Edema is defined as abnormal and excessive accumulation of fluid in the interstitial tissue spaces and serous cavities. It is derived from Greek word oidin which means to swell. Types Edema may be of three main types, localized in the organ or limb, example inflammatory, lymphatic, toxic, allergic, generalized anasarca or dropsy, systemic in distribution and particularly noticeable in the subcutaneous tissue, example renal, cardiac, nutritional, next special, example pulmonary, cerebral. Subcutaneous edema is of two types, pitting edema, non-pitting edema. Pitting edema, it produces depression on momentary pressure of finger on edema. Non-pitting edema, it does not produce depression. Example, myxedema, elephantiasis. Depending on edema fluid, edema are of two types. Transudative edema, it is made up of filtrate of blood plasma. Example, cardiac and renal edema. Exudative edema, it is made of edema of inflammatory tissue. Example, inflammatory edema. Pathogenesis Edema is produced due to interference with normal fluid balance of plasma, interstitial fluid and lymph flow which can be caused by decreased plasma oncotic pressure, increased capillary hydrostatic pressure, lymphatic obstruction, tissue factors, increased capillary permeability, sodium and water retention. Decreased plasma oncotic pressure. The plasma oncotic pressure exerted by the total amount of plasma proteins tend to draw fluid into the vessels normally. A fall in the total plasma protein level or hyperproteinemia less than 5 gram per dl lowers plasma oncotic pressure and thus it cannot effectively counteract the hydrostatic pressure of blood. This results in increased outward movement of fluid from capillary wall and decreased inward movement of fluid from the interstitial space causing edema. Albumin exerts highest oncotic pressure four times than globulin and thus hypoalbuminemia level less than 2.5 gram per dl often results in edema. Hyperproteinemia usually produces generalized edema. Examples, edema of renal disease, nephrotic syndrome, acute glomerulonephritis, ascites of liver disease, cirrhosis, edema due to hyperproteinemia, protein losing enteropathy. Increased capillary hydrostatic pressure. Capillary hydrostatic pressure is a force that normally tends to drive fluid through the capillary wall into interstitial space by counteracting the force of plasma oncotic pressure. A rise in the hydrostatic pressure at the venular end of the capillaries to a level more than the plasma oncotic pressure results in minimal or no reabsorption of fluid at the venular end consequently leading to edema. Examples Edema of cardiovascular disease Congestive cardiac failure Constructive pericarditis Ascites of liver disease Cirrhosis Examples Passive congestion, mechanical obstruction due to thrombosis of veins of lower limbs, varicosities, pressure by uterus, tumors, postural edema, transient edema of feet and ankles due to increased venous pressure. Lymphatic obstruction. Normally, the interstitial fluid in the tissue spaces escapes through lymphatics and thus obstruction to overflow of the lymphatics cause localized edema and known as lymphoedema. Examples, removal of axillary lymph nodes in radical mastectomy, outside pressure on the abdominal or thoracic duct by tumors or effusions, inflammation of the lymphatics as in filariasis, occlusion of lymphatic channels by the malignant cells, Milroy's disease or hereditary lymphoedema due to defective development of lymphatics. Tissue factors. Oncotic pressure of interstitial space and tissue tension and the forces acting in the interstitial space are quite small and insignificant. However, they can cause edema when oncotic pressure of the interstitial fluid is elevated due to increased vascular permeability and inadequate removal of proteins by lymphatics. Tissue tension is lowered as in loose subcutaneous tissues of eyelids and external genitalia. 
increased capillary permeability and intact capillary endothelium acts as semi permeable membrane permitting free flow of water and crystalloids only and allowing only minimal passage of tissue proteins however various capillary poisons such as toxins and the products histamine anoxia venoms certain drugs and chemicals injure the capillary endothelium in such cases there is development of gaps between the endothelial cells increasing the capillary permeability to plasma proteins thus oncotic pressure of plasma is reduced and that of interstitial fluid is elevated consequently producing edema examples generalized edema in systemic infections poisoning certain drugs and chemicals anaphylaxis and anoxia localized edema such as inflammatory edema infections allergic reactions insect bite irritant drugs and chemicals angina neurotic edema it involves face trunk lips larynx pharynx and lungs sodium and water retention intrinsic renal mechanism extra renal mechanism adh mechanism intrinsic renal mechanism it is activated in response to sudden reduction in the effective arterial blood volume as in severe hemorrhage hypovolemia stimulates arterial baroreceptors located in the carotid sinus and aortic arch they in turn send uh, sympathetic outflow via the vasomotor center in the brain as a result renal ischemia occurs producing reduction in gfr a uh, decrease in urinary sodium excretion and consequently retaining sodium in the body extra renal mechanism it involves secretion of aldosterone a sodium retaining hormone by the renin angiotensin system low concentration of sodium in the tubules stimulates renin release by the granular cells of jg apparatus renin then stimulates angiotensinogen and thus initiating a cascade of events leading finally to production of angiotensin 2 angiotensin 2 then stimulates the adrenal cortex to secrete aldosterone which increases the sodium reabsorption from the renal tubules adh mechanism sodium retention leads to secondary water retention under the influence of adh or vasopressin ADH stored in the neurohypophysis is released by increased plasma sodium concentration and hypovolemia. Thus all these three mechanisms lead to excessive retention of sodium and water and the decreased renal excretion in response to hypovolemia and lowered sodium concentration in the renal tubules. Examples edema of cardiac disease congestive cardiac failure ascites of liver disease cirrhosis edema of renal disease nephrotic syndrome glomerulonephritis thank you everyone hope you all like the video please like share and subscribe